manifestation is energetically deciding. You can have the vision board and you can say all the affirmations, but if you don't have the actual beliefs and take the actions necessary, then you're never going to manifest whatever it is that you desire. So in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the things that happen when you energetically decide, okay? And energetically deciding is literally the key to manifestation because when you energetically decide you've already decided that that thing is yours it's just a matter of when it's just a matter of how it's just a matter of time but you have already decided and told God and told the universe I'm claiming this whether it's a career whether it's an item, whether it's a person, you are energetically deciding that this is mine and I get to have this and you're now moving accordingly. I want to preface this video by talking about some of these messages that I get on Instagram. And the minute that I read the message, I can already see the limiting belief right beneath the surface. So someone will say something along the lines of, is this app right for me if I'm divorced? Is this app right for me if I'm in my 50s? Is this, you know, whatever okay for me if blah, 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 okay? If you have not energetically decided that this thing, as simple as a dating app is right for you, then it's not. Whatever you expect to get out of something is what you're going to get. So if you view life as there are no wrong decisions, there are no wrong options, every single step that I take is guiding me towards my destination, then that's going to be your reality. If you have that mindset of, I never lose, I either win or I learn, then that is going to be your reality. Okay, so I recently had something happen to me where I was in this app, okay, it's called Yoda, and it's a savings account. And the benefit of this savings account was that it was similar to a lotto ticket, right? So each $25 that you had saved got you one ticket towards this lotto type of thing. And you could win a Tesla, you could win up to a million dollars. And I was like, okay, why not? I'll put some money in there just for fun because I never play lotto tickets. So this was just kind of me messing around with an app and seeing if I got anything. And there were times where I won money. I think I won like, it must have been something like a uh, hundred or two hundred dollars. I'm not sure, okay? But this was across several years. And I also included a link to this app down in my description and I had told friends and family about it. And unfortunately, this company is now going bankrupt. So what that means is everyone's money is basically locked and nobody is able to withdraw their money. So I have around $8,000 in this app. And of course, my first reaction could have been rage. It could have been sadness. It could have been disappointment. It could have been like blaming and pointing the fingers and all of that. But instead, it was acceptance. And I energetically decided that this is in God's hands and whatever is meant to happen will happen. So whether that means I'm going to get my $8,000 back, great. Whether that means I lost that money, I'm accepting that. Because I know that everything's working out in my favor. There are no losses, there are no mistakes, there are only lessons and there are only steps that are taking me closer to my dreams. So I was talking to my sister about this and she was just like, oh my God, you need to email them. You need to raise a complaint. You need to do this. You need to do that. And like, I could just feel her fear, which I totally understand. 8,000 is not a small amount of money. 8,000 could afford like two, three months rent 
for some people. And it could afford me like a first class ticket on probably a month long vacation. So I'm not saying that the money doesn't matter, but it's the mindset. It's this mindset where you know that everything's working out in your favor. And hell, if I have to lose $8,000, that's fine. I already know that this is just one little, this is just one little challenge. This is just one little roadblock on my way to making millions of dollars. So I have energetically decided that, you know what? You have to lose hundreds to make thousands. You have to lose thousands to make millions. You have to lose millions to make billions. And that is just my belief. So that is just kind of one small example of energetically deciding. But obviously I kind of got on a tangent here. We are talking about mainly when you are wanting to manifest something. So let's say you want to manifest starting a business. Let's say you want to manifest finding a dream partner. Let's say you want to manifest your dream home. You need to energetically decide. So I'm going to give you guys two examples in my life where I manifested something and I'm currently living it. So one of those things was manifesting a husband. I remember I was this was 2018 um, so I was 22 years old so when I was 22 years old I had just graduated college I was starting my business I was getting invested in the stock market and at this time I energetically decided I am going to get married I'm going to meet my dream man as I downloaded this dating app in my head I was like I'm going to meet my person on here. I just decided. I had been on other dating apps before, but I made that decision that this would be the one. This would be the one. This would be the platform in which I would meet my person. And so with that in mind, I made my profile. I took the aligned action. I did the thing. And before you know it, I went on a few dates, I met a few people, and lo and behold, I met my now husband, okay? So when I tell people I manifested my husband, that doesn't mean that I was just in my room saying, God, you know, bring me my partner to my door, and I fell asleep and I woke up and he was there. <laughs> no. It meant I decided I had that belief system, that mindset that this is happening, that I've accepted this and I've decided. And then I took the steps. I took aligned action. I went on the dates. I made the profile, right? So it was a combination of all of those things. Now, same thing with our dream house, which I'm currently sitting in and I I still just cannot get over it. I'm in awe every single day waking up in this palace, okay? So it had always been my husband and my dream to buy a home. Since we met, this has been just something that we were working towards. And before I even met my husband, I had a standard that I would not get married unless this man had a house for us. Okay, now let me tell you the reality. I decided that. I decided that I'm not getting married without a house. I'm not taking that step without having the keys. But the reality was we got engaged and there was no house yet. We planned our elopement and there was no house yet. And during all of this, of course doubts crept up. Of course fears came up. Of course this feeling of, oh my God, is, is, is this not happening, came up. But in those moments, I said, no, no, no. I'm not tuning into fear. I'm tuning into faith. And I am deciding that it is happening. In this moment, it is being prepared for us. And so 
during this time, mind you, we were living in an apartment, so it was we were just on a lease. It wasn't something that we physically owned. And so many people judged us. So many people were like, why are you taking vacations, buying luxury things, spoiling each other, and not buying a home? But it just made sense for us during that point in our life. And I'm so grateful that we did it that way because we were saving and we were able to afford something that we really ended up loving. So to finish this story, we get eloped, we're now married, and there's still no house. And I'm like, it's happening, I know it's gonna happen. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, I've decided. And so we looked, we looked, we looked, we couldn't find anything that wowed us in California. And then I decided, you know what? We are not just limited to California. We can look in other places. So we expanded our search to Nevada. And we we took the action. We, we came out to Nevada several times, met with a realtor, viewed dozens of open houses. And a month went by and there was still nothing. There were places that we liked, but nothing was wowing us. And finally, one day we were sitting in our hotel room after a weekend of looking at places and my husband goes, what about this one, honey? And he shows me his phone and I was like, wow, five bedrooms, five bathrooms, 4,000 square feet, guard gated. Like the more I was reading and looking at the pictures, I'm like, this is way better and way more amazing than anything I could have ever dreamt up, than anything we've seen up until now. So that next day we went to see it and literally the minute we stepped into that house, we hadn't even seen the second floor yet and my husband was like, we're putting an offer on this. We did not consult our families. This is going to make me emotional. We didn't, we didn't even ask anyone, we just knew. And so we put an offer and we got it. And here we are. And so during any of those stages, had I let that desire go, had I said, you know what? This isn't meant for me. We're not going to find a house. Maybe I would have honestly told my partner, you know what? I can't get married. I don't see the house yet. But I had that faith, I had that belief that it was happening for us, it was working out for us, that God was preparing that property for us. Even though I couldn't see it, I felt it. I was already grateful for it, okay? So here we are now, and sometimes I'm just like, oh my goodness, I can't even believe that we live in such an amazing place that I'm so lucky to call home, and it makes me so grateful that I energetically decided and that I didn't give up that dream and that I didn't listen to any naysayers and that I didn't give in back when we were being judged in our apartment and that I just knew I was on divine time and that it would happen when it was meant to. So with all of that being said, <laughs> That was like the longest introduction of my life, but now I want to talk about what happens when you energetically decide and you're going to see how these things showed up in my examples. Whether it was me manifesting my husband or the house, these things happened. And these are the things that happen when you energetically decide. Okay, so the first thing that is going to happen is you are going to be in solution consciousness. What does that mean? It means that you are in a mindset where any problem that shows up, there is a solution for it. You are in this energy of solutions. So anything that arises, you know there's a solution for it. In our example of the house, when we were looking in California and nothing was showing up for us, instead of saying, oh, well, I guess we're going to stop looking, we were like, no, there is a solution to this. We are going to expand our search. We're going to expand it to a different state. 
So had we not been in solution consciousness, we may have been in California to this day still trying to make our dream fit inside this box that was not meant for us. Okay, so we don't always know the how or the why or the where. We just know the destination. So perhaps your dream is to start a business and you have been trying to start this type of business. Maybe it's a cosmetics business, but for some reason it's just not working out. And you keep getting all these nudges for starting a different type of business, for starting a housekeeping business and you're like, huh? Well, maybe you need to tap into that, into that solution consciousness and realize, well, hey, maybe it's not this business that I need to start, but this one. And at the end of the day, a business is a business. A dream is a dream. So whether this house is located in California, Florida, Europe, I don't care because I got it. My manifestation was to have a dream home with my husband. It had nothing to do with location because I know that wherever we are, we will create a home. Okay. So the first thing is solution consciousness. And this is when you are open to solutions from any source, from any direction, from any person. So you are literally a channel for solutions. Okay. The next thing is aligned action. And this means you're not just sitting in your room praying, you're actually doing something. You're taking the steps. So if it's for a home, you're getting approved for the loan. You're going on the open houses. You're searching on Zillow and Redfin. You're actually taking those steps to ensure that you're on the right path. Okay, so please don't neglect action because manifestation is not just about praying and thinking and believing, but a huge part of it is doing the thing, is taking the action. Okay, so please take the steps towards your desires. Own it. Don't just talk about it, do it. Okay, this is your invitation to do the thing. If you're energetically deciding that you're going to meet your husband by the end of this year, then that means you better be on a dating app. You better be going out. You better be connecting with friends, with you know family members. You better be going out and networking and just seeing where the solution is going to come from any and all sources. Okay. The next thing that's going to happen is synchronicities. This is when things just kind of line up in an almost supernatural way. In my husband and my example, our synchronicity was this fact that all of a sudden we had had weekends of open houses that didn't work out, but actually on the day where we were going to leave, we found this one last home to look at and we scheduled it last minute. And even weirder than that, we were the first people to view this home. If you have ever been in the process of buying a home, you know that it's like hotcakes to be the first person to view a home. So the fact that we were the first family to come view this home obviously gave us a huge advantage when it came to putting in an offer and all those sorts of things. And so that synchronicity that we were able to schedule a viewing, not even within 24 hours of seeing it online. And mind you, my husband had seen the listing on the day that it was posted. So that is a huge synchronicity that on the same day this house is put out into the market, my husband views it and we're able to see it the next day. Okay, so that is just one example of a synchronicity. Another synchronicity was how we met our realtor. Several years ago, I started following different realtors in nearby states just to see what was out there. And lo and behold, when we were ready to purchase a home, I sent our realtor a message and he was like, yes, I would love to work with you. And he ended up being our realtor. An individual who we were following each other on Instagram for years. He probably had no idea that I would be a future client of his. And it just all worked out. So it was a synchronicity. 
okay? So these are just examples of different synchronicities. I think that when you are plugged in and you energetically decide, you are going to see the synchronicities. Whether it's a certain person that like pops up out of the blue, whether it's you know, a connection that you've made via someone else that just happens to come about right after you've decided. It could even be seeing angel numbers or, you know, going to a certain location and having like a word or a number that catches your eye. Maybe it's the same as your birthday or your favorite number or anything like that. I'm always keeping my eyes open for the symbols, for the signs, because I truly do believe that God will plant these little, you know, hints of magic around us to let us know that we are on the right path, that we are taking the aligned action and that he is doing his part up there to make it happen behind the scenes. The last thing that happens, which is honestly one of the best is having God's favor. So this is when things are working out. God is blessing you. God is making it easy for you. God is making it to where he's moving mountains to make this thing happen for you. So one example in our life was that when we put an offer on this house and we got it, we had no idea we would be buying a house so quickly. We actually still had our apartment lease for like an additional two months or something. So there was actually a period where we had a home in Nevada and an apartment in Irvine. And as you guys know, that is not cheap, right? So we had an option with our apartment to move out early. And if the apartment company was able to fill our lease with new tenants, then we could get some money back, right? But it wasn't guaranteed. So we had to make this option, like, are we going to keep both places, which obviously there was a lot of comfort with that because my family's back, back in California. So having that apartment was nice for a while because I could go home and visit and we still had our own spot. And, you know, there was just a certain comfort of knowing that we still had that space so we had that option to keep it but then we'd be paying rent and a mortgage or we had this option of moving out early with the uncertainty that we're going to continue paying for this place and we're not occupying it or there's a chance where we're going to move out they're going to fill it and we'll at least get a month or two back so my husband and I both decided that we we're gonna move out. We were ready to go to Nevada. We had this beautiful home waiting for us. We were ready to just furnish it and turn it into a home and do all those things. And so that's what we did was we moved out and it was a shock to everyone, right? Because up until this point, we had told all our friends and family, we're still here for another two, three months. We have our lease and all that. And then all of a sudden a week later, I'm like, actually, um, we're moving out next week. And everyone's like, what? Because mind you, we just, we made all these quantum leaps without really telling anyone, like even my clients, when it came to my business, I told them after the fact because I'm very much that type of person who I want to see the thing, I want the results, I want the physical reality of it before I share openly. So a lot of people really didn't even know about this house until we were already moved in. <laughs> you know, like, of course our families found out once we put the offer in, but like, I had some people who were a little bit upset with me, like, why didn't you tell me when you were looking or when you were planning or when you were at least viewing homes? And I just was like, you know what? This was me and Shine's decision. This was our decision as husband and wife. And this was one of the things that we just wanted to do on our own. We wanted it to be our nest, our sanctuary. And we didn't want anyone's opinion. We didn't want outside voices or opinions to skew our view of the house. We didn't want people to either push us away or tell us that, you know, Nevada was bad or that the house had flaws. We just really wanted to be grounded in our decision and we wanted to be wholeheartedly responsible for it. We didn't want to get anyone's opinion on the matter. We just wanted to take that leap together. And so, 
We ended up moving out, right? And a few weeks go by, nobody's filled it, so we're still paying rent on it, and we're kind of feeling like, oh, was that the right decision? But of course, anytime I have these doubts, I'm like, it was the right decision. In this moment, that apartment is being shown, it's going to be filled, there's going to be tenants, we're gonna get money back. And because I energetically decided, guess what? A few weeks later, we find out that the apartment has been filled and we will be receiving one month of rent back as a refund. So we did end up getting that one month refund. We still had to pay, I think, for the month before it was filled. But this whole explanation is just to show you that God will be showing you favor. He'll be showing you grace and he will be showing you that he heard you. He heard your desire. He heard your prayer. And he's currently in the process of bringing it to you, of revealing it to you. And so I truly believe one of the best things you can do when you energetically decide is to have gratitude for that thing. Even if it hasn't showed up, be grateful for it. Because if you really are in faith, then you know it's just a matter of time. So be grateful even before it shows up. Be grateful even before it's in your physical hands. Be grateful before you've even gotten the manifestation. So my husband and I were head over heels happy about this house before we got it. Every time we saw a house and it wasn't vibing with us, I would tell him it's all good, babe, because this is one house closer to the one that we're going to love, right? Instead of saying, oh, this house sucks. It's not what we want. Ugh, we've seen all these homes. And no, 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 nope. I was like, thank you, God, for allowing us to see one more home and to bring us closer to the one. And so with that mentality and with that energy and with that unwavering faith, we just knew that our house was being prepared for us, that it was being made perfect for us. And we were so grateful for it before it even showed up. Like we were just so excited. We were already just you know, in that kind of spring cleaning phase of getting rid of things and making space. I can actually make a whole video on some of the things I did to manifest this house, um, like certain things that I did when we were living in our old apartment just to energetically prepare and to show God and the universe that I was ready for this next chapter. I was ready for this house. So I could do a whole nother video on that. So when it comes to manifestation, I want you all to know it's not just about affirming, it's not just about praying, it's about all these other things, the aligned action, having the gratitude, keeping your eyes open for synchronicities, being open to solutions. All of these things are factors when it comes to manifestations. And I wholeheartedly believe in manifestation. I know that honestly, 90% of my life is a manifestation come true. And I know that I simply wouldn't have gotten here. I wouldn't be in this position now were it not for my faith, were it not for my relationship with God, was it not for having the support system around me and having that strong belief and strong faith that everything that is meant for me is for me so i really just want to leave you with that today i want to give you that motivation that encouragement and that just that nudge that whatever it is that you are manifesting is on its way to you to just stay true to your faith and even in those moments of of doubt of fear just remind yourself again how many things that have happened before your eyes that used to just be a prayer, you know? Like we are all currently living 
some part of our life right now was something we used to yearn for, was something we used to wish for. So always just keep track of those blessings because I truly believe that the more that we give thanks, the more that we're grateful, the more that we notice and embrace and really cherish our blessings, the more they multiply and the more they just compound and the more that we continue being blessed. So I love you guys so, so much. Thank you for being here. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you soon. Bye.